When you're backing up your collection of DVD and Blu-ray movies and TV shows using Handbrake, there's a lot of different options that you can choose from uh, when it comes to how much compression you're going to apply. In October of 2018, I made a video showing how to use a program called Make MKV to rip your discs and then use Handbrake to compress those files so that they'll take up less space on your NAS or other home media server. Fast forward to May of this year, 2020, uh, I made a new video that shows how to enable GPU encoding in Handbrake, which speeds up the encoding process significantly. In that video, I was using the H.265 NVIDIA NVENC codec to compress the digital backup copies of my movies, uh, and the graphics card I was using uh, for this was my Gigabyte Aorus RTX 2070 Super. A friend of mine who is interested in backing up his movie collection uh, watched my videos and asked if I knew how much of a difference there is in encoding times between my 2070 Super and other GPUs uh, because he's not interested in spending a bunch of money on a new graphics card simply to encode his movies. Uh, sadly, I had to tell him that I didn't know because I don't have access to tons of different hardware, um, so I hadn't tested it to find out. So his question got me wondering, you know, what the difference would be like. So even though I don't have the resources of bigger channels, I grabbed the hardware that I ha do have access to and got to work testing it. The hardware that I will be using in this video is number one, my gaming slash editing rig, which has a Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core 24 thread CPU and an RTX 2070 Super. Number two, my laptop, which has an Intel i7-8750H 6 core 12 thread CPU and a GTX 1050 Ti. And number three, my friend's PC, which has a Ryzen 3 1200 quad core CPU and a Radeon RX 570. For the first comparison, I ripped a Blu-ray copy of Jurassic World using Make MKV, which output a 32.7 gigabyte MKV file and then compressed it using the HQ 1080p 30 surround preset in Handbrake, and here's how things went. Using just my Ryzen 9 3900X as my control, you know, so no GPU encoding being used. Uh, and the H.265 codec, it took about an hour and 25 minutes to complete the encoding process. Switching to H.264 uh, sped things up a bit to just over an hour at 61 and a half minutes. Next up was the RTX 2070 Super, which crushed the 3900X's time using H.265 by almost an hour, coming in at around 27 minutes. And now, if you think that's cool, well, wait until you see this next result. Switching to H.264, cut the time down even more to just 12 minutes. I, I know, it's freaking insane, right? Uh, whatever NVIDIA is doing with the Turing architecture for video encoding, uh, at least when it comes to the H.264 codec, is nothing short of magical. Now, there may be some of you asking what's the advantages of using H.265 over H.264 or vice versa. Uh, well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys that I am no expert when it comes to all of these different elements of video encoding. As I've been messing with this stuff, I've slowly been researching and learning, so even though I don't know everything, um, I will share what little I do know. As for the question regarding the advantages of using H.264 or H.265, H.265 is supposed to, to offer better visual fidelity uh, for higher resolution content. Um, on 1080p content, I don't really see a difference between H.265 and H.264, but I imagine for higher resolution content like 4K and 8K in the future, uh, it will become much more noticeable. One thing I guess I would consider an advantage of using H.265 over H.264 is H.265 compresses the files down smaller, uh, so they take up less space on my home media server. 
For example, the movie I'm using in this video, the MKV RIP, is 32.7 gigabytes. Uh, using the H.264 codec and the HQ1080p30 surround preset uh, in Handbrake, um, Handbrake is able to compress that down to 13.6 gigabytes. Using H.265, it's able to shave an additional 4.84 gigabytes off of that, ending up at 8.76 gigabytes. And when you have hundreds of movies and TV shows on your media server, uh, that allows you to add a lot more movies and shows than you would otherwise be able to. Okay, so uh, now let's uh, get back to our GPU encoding testing. I already knew from my previous video that using GPU encoding was saving me massive amounts of time compared to using CPU encoding, uh, so those first couple tests didn't tell me anything new that I didn't already know. But now I was excited to run the same tests on my laptop and see how it compared. First up, I used NVIDIA NVENC with my laptop's 1050 Ti, and using the H.265 codec, the 1050 Ti made a very good showing versus the 2070 Super, coming in only one minute slower at right around 28 minutes. The H.264 results using NVIDIA's Pascal architecture aren't as impressive as Turing's but it did speed up the total encoding time by one minute over using H.265, so I guess that's good. At this point, I have now tested all the NVIDIA GPUs I currently have access to, so it was time to move on to testing Intel QuickSync uh, using the UHD 630 integrated graphics of my i7-8750H in my laptop, and it completed encoding our 32.7 gigabyte test file in about 45 minutes using H.265 and about 32 minutes using H.264. So, not as fast as NVIDIA NVENC, but light years ahead of what the i7-8750H can do on its own. Using just the 8750H to encode the video took 2 hours and 40 minutes to complete using H.265 and 1 hour and 35 minutes using H.264. So yeah, if you have an Intel CPU and you've been using Handbrake to compress the digital backup copies of your movie library and haven't been using QuickSync, I think you're going to want to start using it right now because uh, making that little change is going to save you a ton of time. Okay, so we've seen how NVIDIA NVENC and Intel QuickSync perform with our test file, but what about AMD VCE encoding? Uh, well, using a Radeon RX 570 graphics card paired with a Ryzen 3 1200 CPU, uh, it was able to encode our movie in about 45 minutes using H.265 and then a mere 3 minutes faster using H.264. So the RX 570 was able to tie with my i7-8750H's UHD 630 integrated graphics for the slowest of the GPU encoders I tested when using the H.265 codec, but ended up being the slowest of all the GPU encoders I tested when using H.264. That being said, it is still much faster than just using CPU encoding as it beat out the 6-core 12-thread i7-8750H and even the 12-core 24-thread Ryzen 9 3900X by a very sizable margin. I did also test to see how the Ryzen 3 1200 would fare against the other CPUs, and it being a 4-core CPU, I knew it was going to be the slowest by far. But sadly, I wasn't able to verify this because Handbrake kept crashing after encoding for only a few minutes. I don't know if this is a handbrake issue, an AMD driver issue, or whatever, but I was never able to complete a run with the Ryzen 3 1200, so yeah. I probably should make it known that all the encoding times I've discussed in this video is for a 1080p Blu-ray rip of a 2 hour and 4 minute movie. Uh, for those of you interested in seeing what encoding time is like for a DVD, uh, the following chart shows encoding times for a DVD rip of one of my all-time favorite movies, uh, Tommy Boy. Uh, the source file is a 1 hour and 37 minute long 4.12 gigabyte MKV file, 
and I use the Super HQ 480p 30 surround preset in handbrake. Just like with the Blu-ray rip, I tested with both the H.264 and H.265 codecs, and it's a pretty similar story. Uh, only the total encoding time is much shorter because there's a lot less data to deal with on a DVD compared to a Blu-ray. As for the video quality output by all these different methods and codecs, uh, in my opinion, they all deliver excellent results. I compared each compressed copy with the original uncompressed MKV rip side by side on my 4K IPS LG monitor, and my eyes saw no noticeable difference between any of them. Uh, they all look the same to me. <laughs> Depending on what hardware you have on your PC, the amount of encoding time is certain to vary from what I show in this video, but the reason I made this video is to give people an idea of what the differences are between the different encoding methods. For now, NVIDIA clearly holds the crown for being able to get the job done the quickest. Hail to the king, baby. Uh, with Intel coming in second and AMD coming in a close third. In my opinion, there is no reason to use CPU encoding any longer. Uh, the time savings that GPU encoding offers is an absolute no-brainer. We're just about to the end of the video, and it's a good thing too, because my room is getting hot. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, I'm sure you've watched enough YouTube uh, to know what to do. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this one. If you'd like to help support the channel uh, while picking up stuff that you need or want, I do have an Amazon store I've placed a link to in the video description where you can purchase different products that I feature in my videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. We'll catch you later.